These two surahs particularly focus on family life. This is all I will say about this. Then Surah Al-Mulk. The main theme of this surah is the first ayah. Tabarak al-ladhi bi yadihi al-mulk. Tabarak is from Tabab al-Tafa'ul. You know, use the word baraka when it is uh, superlated. Tabaruk, it becomes. The meaning of tabaruk is, you know, in the olden days when a camel used to sit down and when the chest of the camel is fully established on the ground, and a camel usually has an extra leather on this side where the chest is. So when it would have full tamakkun and full uh, uh, afbat upon the land, when it is fully sitting on the land, this would be called uh, this would be called barak. Also, what is the what is the what is the uh, relationship here? I'll explain. Also, when an army would come to uh, to to its uh, ground where it's going to fight and all the soldiers are in their position and they have firmly established themselves in their place and they're ready to attack, this was also called tabaruk or baruk. Uh, the reason is, tabaruk is, Allah doesn't need blessings, right? Allah is the one who gives blessings. So over here the meaning of it is not that Allah needs blessings, but rather Allah is firmly established in what? Tabarak al-jadhi bi yadihi al He's firmly established in His authority and His kingship that he has. In his hands, the authority is in his hands and it's firmly established and it's not going anywhere. If you have baraka in something, it means what? If you have one dollar, it will last like ten dollars. So it has athbat, has tamakkun, has, has longevity and, and is, is uh, stability. You have ten dollars and it lasts like a hundred dollars, this is baraka. So the main theme of this surah is that look at how Allah has and uh, I wish I had time, maybe in Jum'ah khutbah I'll uh, talk about this because what I'm planning to do is continue in Jum'ah khutbah and then for the rest of the days I'm only going to do the 30th juz, basically break it down into a little bit more. So this is the main theme of this surah. Then, uh, Sutul Qalam. Sutul Qalam is very interesting. Remember, Sutul Qalam was amongst the first surahs. And the first word or the first letter is Noon wal Qalami wa ma yasturun. Those of you that are familiar a little bit with Chinese, they uh, realize that the letters are based off of pictures. The letters in China are based off of pictures. People don't realize this, but this is partially true with Arabic also. Noon used to signify the fish. The noon, the, uh, this, and the dot in the middle used to signify a fish. And also the noon with a dot in the middle used to also signify um, uh, the ink, the ink pot where you put the ink. Just one, uh, just one example that's very interesting, I'll share with you, that uh, some of the scholars like uh, uh, Molana, uh, I forget, a uh, very famous scholar, but right now, he, you know, Ta, like for example, Ta, all the surahs that have Ta in it refer to Musa and the magicians. And Ta looks like a snake that's standing up with a curled tail in the back. So, you know, Ta Seen, Ta Seen, Meme. So some scholars, uh, um, uh, like for example, Mona Islahi, his, fa his uh, brother uh, also, uh, they looked at these things, not just in terms of what are the letters mean, but also what is the, like Ba, Ba used to mean the house. Ba was, when you wrote like the Ba, the shape, it would stand for 
meaning the house. Jim, for example, would mean the camel. You know, if you look at how Jim is written, like the camel. Anyway, the point I'm trying to say is, is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was illiterate. Far be it that he knew any particular letters, meaning of the alphabet. Because if you're illiterate, you don't know the alphabet. But more than that, far be it that he would know what the, the graphical meaning of these letters were. And what is interesting in this surah, in the beginning it says, Noon, wal qalami wa ma yasfurun. Noon, and by what they're writing. And most of the scholars agree that this is the second or the third surah. Over there, Allama bil qalam, he taught by the pen. Noon, wal qalami wa ma yasfurun. Noon, and by the pen that they're writing with. Meaning the Quran when it was, it was being written down immediately. It was being written down from the very beginning. And the other is Ashabul Hud, Sahibul Hud. Zi Noon is also his other name. The one of the Noon, meaning the possessor of the Noon, meaning the possessor of the fish. Zi Noon is Ashabul Hud. So this surah is interesting in this way. Then Al Haqa Al Haqa. This surah is very interesting. Uh, there's a very interesting graphical picture that I'd like to uh, share you, with you. Uh, this, of course, whole section is about the Day of Judgment. And over here, I want to share with you an interesting relationship between this surah and Surah Al-Ma'arij, and this Surah Al-Ma'arij, and Surah Al-Nuh and Surah Al-Jinn, or it's one of these. فَأَمَّا مُنْ uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَا as for the one who's given the book in the right, he says, Oh, bring me my book. You know, this picture is given, vividity is given, so it creates an illustration in your mind, so it imprints the idea in your mind, so it becomes a reality in your mind. Right? Bring me my book. I want to read it. Oh, I definitely used to think this day is going to come. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّادِيَةِ And then he will have a happy life from there. فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةِ In high gardens. قُطُوفُهُ دَانِيَةِ The fruits, they'll be just at his mouth. Anything he wants, any food, any drink he wants. قُطُوفُهَ دَانِيَةِ كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةِ And then eat and drink as you did uh, because of what you did in the previous days. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ This contrast is always given whenever Jannah is mentioned. Generally, Jahannam is mentioned. Whenever there's glad tidings, uh, uh, warning is also given. So, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ And when the person is given the book in the left hand, he says, No, 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 I don't want the book. I don't want my book. وَلَمْ أَدْرِي مَا حِسَابِي I don't know what will be my hisab. I don't know what will be my state. يَا لَيْتَنِي كَانَتِ الْقَادِيَ Only I wish I was just dead. It was better I was dead than I was raised up today. مَا أَغْنَ عَنِّي مَالِيَ My wealth came to no avail to me today. حَلَقْ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَ My authority and my power is gone from me. خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوا Now take him and bind him. خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوا فِي الْجَحِيمِ أصلوا and burn him in the hellfire. في سلسلة الزرع زرع زرعها سبعون ذراعا فسلوكو and he'll be tied to chains and the picture imagery is like you're being roasted and like a kebab, you know, is being roasted like that. Anyway, so the Maharaj, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts with a very very interesting sentence. سأل سائل بعذاب الواقع. The questioner asked for the punishment to come. Who is this? Many scholars, including myself, they feel this was Muhammad When he first gave his da'wah in the very initial stages, and he was a man of honor, you know, and he felt, okay, I've conveyed the message, these people are not, these people are not going to listen to me. They're not going to listen to me, but Allah said, no, you have to keep going. And then over this, for this, two more examples are given. One is Surah Nuh. You know what's interesting about Surah Nuh has, Nuh, Surah Nuh has 950 letters. And what was the age of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in Quran 950? Has exactly 950 letters. Anyway, so in comparison to the Surah Al-Ma'arij, Sa'ala Sa'ilu bi azabi wa aqiya Surah Nuh. So here is a man, look, he did da'wah for 900, I mean, who would believe someone did da'wah for 950 years? No one would believe it unless it's in Quran. Meaning, this is the only reason to believe it. So, and then the other surah after the Surah Al-Jinn is also an da'wah. Over here is, look, he did da'wah for 950 years, they didn't believe it. Except for maybe a handful. 
And over there is the jinn. Inna sami'ana Qur'anan ajaba. Yahdi ila rushdi fa'aman nabi. Those jinns, and they were not just any jinns, they were the jinns from the shayateen, meaning the, 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 worst, the worst of the jinns. When they saw they can't go to the sky anymore to get news and information, then the shaytan, the big one, you know, he said, hey, find out what's happening in the world. And then that's when one of the jinn, one of a group of these, they heard this jinn. Two jinn occasions are mentioned in Quran, one in Surah Haqqaf, that was uh, jinns that were Jews, and this jinns that were with the devil. Anyway. And this is a misnomer, I just want this to be clear, jinns are not very big, okay? The Prophet ﷺ says that when you have your safuf and your safuf are not straight in the shayateen, they're in between your legs. The Prophet ﷺ said that when you're sleeping, uh, he will pee in your ears uh, for you not to wake up at Fajr, for example. So the jinns are actually very small, but their power is, you was be sufi sadur and as they affect your mind. Okay. So anyway, sudul jinn, so the jinn is about doing da'wah to also it's about da'wah. So the nuh is also about da'wah. Then after this is So the Muzammil and Sutul Mudassir. So the Qalam was either the second surah revealed or the third surah revealed to the Prophet. So the Muzammil was also either the second or the third surah revealed to the Prophet. Ya Yuhal Muzammil Qumil Layla illa Qalila. Oh Prophet, this is now when hardly any Quran had come down. He's told. O oh, Muhammad stand up all night, read Quran all night. The twin surah of this over here is your tazkiyah. Stand up at night and read Quran, the Hajjud prayer. Over there is da'wah. Okay? Ya yuhal mudathir, sutul mudathir. Um fa'anzir. Stand up and warn the people. Majority of the opinion is the Prophet became Nabi with Iqra and he became Rasul with mudathir because of the uh, Zamanatul Fitra, the period, uh, the, the, the gap of the time period. That was started with this. Ya yuhal mudathir, qum fa'anzir, wa rabbaka fakabbir. Why? And do da'wah, why? Wa rabbaka fakabbir. Make Allah supreme. Thayabaka fatahir, wa ruzza fahjir, wa la tamrun tastaksir, wa li rabbika fasbir. In these surahs, particularly the Sutul Mudassir and Sutul Muzammil, the address is to the Prophet wasallam singularly from, from most of it. Even though via the Prophet it is to us also. Another thing about Sutul Mudassir that I want to share with you that's very interesting, I'm going to go a little bit over the time today, just two minutes, because I'm almost done with the section that I want to complete. And that is that the number